Now it's time to harvest my mugwort. No, that's not something from Harry Potter's movies. It is mugwort and it is beautiful in making into wreaths. Now you also can use this, but do your own research when you want to look at things like this. There's limited of what I can say here online, but mugwort can be used for other things. You have to be really careful because it is a bitter and a bitter herb is something you have to be really careful with. So I use it just for mainly decorations. I have a lot I have to cut today. I'm actually going to cut most of it. And I have a special kind of battery operated cutter, which is amazing when you have a big project like this. My mugwort is six feet high and it's going to take me quite a bit. So this isn't something that you can make within a couple minutes. It takes me about an hour and a half to make one wreath. Let's go ahead and cut it. Back in the day, I used to use a pair of scissors and I would ruin all these scissors. Now I have something really neat. So the end of the mugwort has some really beautiful silver balls that make it really pretty in wreaths. Now this is gonna take me a long time to cut all this. And you have to be careful when you grow this or it would go all over your garden. All right, so we are done and we have a huge amount of mugwort. Now we have to go up near where I burn my sticks and things like that. And we have to go through all of this and we only need the flower heads. And it is a lot of it. This will take me hours. I may not do this all in one sitting. All right, now we can take all the mugwort and put it on a pile. Make sure I have it all going the same direction. All right, so now it's gonna take me a couple hours. Literally, a couple hours. I have to take all of this, the tops off, and discard the other. So I'm gonna go through all of it and take the tops off. I'm gonna be going through this three times before I'm finished. So step number two is take all these tops off. And then I have to go back, do it all over again, and then take some of the leaves off. So as you can see, this is gonna take me a very long time. It's something I make every year and I absolutely love it. It stays fresh all year. But as you can see, you can't have it like this. So we just sit and we strip the leaves off of it. And then the stalk part, I just will burn up. It smells amazing. All right, I will see you guys in a little bit. Halfway there. Of all that mugwort, this is what we have left and this is what we have to make the wreath with. I need to go out in the garden and get some more herbs to add to it and then we'll start making our wreath. All right, I have it half done and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we're done. Now I am going to be adding some herbs to this later, but I wanna show you how we work on all of this. 
Now this wreath is going to be flat and I'm going to have a candle in the middle of it. You can hang this wreath up, but what you need to do is after you make it, you need to lay it flat for three weeks, two to three weeks. So it dries flat. If you hang it up right away fresh, it will wilt and bend and it not look so pretty. All right, let's finish this. So once again, we're going to take it, cut the tops off again. So it goes through a three step process before it gets made into a wreath. Now this is how I do it with all herbs if I'm making a wreath. Now this is just the filler. So, or you could have it just like this. You could have it plain like this if you wanted it. In colonial times, they would have used this to keep bugs out of the house. This is a moth deterrent. I don't think rodents like this either. So a lot of these herbs were used in colonial times to keep the bugs out of the house. They would have this in their animal pens. So then we're gonna just go like this, wrap it around. You can do this with all herbs. You can do this with thyme, oregano, any of the herbs. All right, let's finish the wreath. And then the very end, we're gonna tuck it like this. And we'll just do a little more so it's full at the very end of it. Now generally this is where you would put your bow. So you would put your bow right here where there's a little bit of a gap. Now we're gonna lay it there for a couple days and then I'm gonna add some herbs to put to it to give it some color. Thanks for watching the following video. If you love herbs and you want to learn more about them, here's a whole playlist dedicated just for you.